Clarksville, Iowa, a place where if you tell most people you're from there, they give you nothing but a puzzled look. But the people of Clarksville have nothing but pride for the little town. A big problem with little towns like Clarksville is that sometimes certain services can be hard to come by. And most of the time, when those services aren't convenient, people won't attempt to access them. One of which is an exercising gym. Physical health is something that everyone must keep in constant mind. Some people need to take extra special care of themselves and others just need to get up and do something every once in a while. But when there isn't anything near you, it can be extremely difficult to motivate yourself to actually do it. That was a prominent issue in Clarksville, Iowa for quite some time. If we had never opened uh, Opportunity Therapy in the Clarksville Fit Club, I think there would be a lot of people who either would have to drive out of town to access services, um, which is very difficult when you're coming to physical therapy. Generally, you come two to three times a week, and um, that makes it extremely challenging even to drive shorter distances um, consistently. I do believe also that if people had to drive out of the out of the area to access services they probably would a lot in a lot of time choose to not get services um, which is, is very unfortunate um, because in our physical therapy we treat a lot of, of different diagnoses and different things and I think a lot of people would have chose unfortunately to take the path of, of not seeking services. Income Mike and Teresa Nagin. Being fitness enthusiasts, they realized that their hometown had no real place to stay fit. So they decided to part ways with their previous employer and embark on the journey that is entrepreneurship. Neither had much education in business or any previous experience owning or operating one, but they had plenty of ambition and hope for the future. They had a clear set goal of what they wanted accomplished. And our goal was to uh, have a, a building that was comfortable for people to come into. It was modern and state of the art on the inside, but we kept that um, that nostalgia of having um, the, in representing the older um, construction and the things that had been there for over 100, 125, 130 years. Um, and a place that, that people could feel comfortable when they came in and uh, provided we provided services to. The first obstacle for them was construction. To own a fit club and provide therapy, they needed to meet certain requirements. With the building they bought having been originally constructed in the 1800s and with it formerly being a grocery store, it became quite clear that they had a lot of work to do. The main thing they needed to install was a ramp. The building needed to be handicap accessible for the therapy side to work, but all they had was stairs. This forced them to remove the stairs and partially demolish the front of the building so that it could be reconstructed. <clears throat> uh, yeah, the, the ramp was put in there to code. I think the code is like uh, one, one inch of rise for every foot of length. So that was what determined the length of the ramp was actually constructed by uh, Craig Falkerts and it ha what had to happen was the floor of the original building was approximately two feet above sidewalk level so and it, it was built with uh, full full span floor joists from one wall outside wall to the other. So they had to be cut off the width of the ramp after they were supported by a supporting wall in the basement to hold that up. So that was a, that was a pretty major uh, change in the, in the floor in there. And at that time, Craig did the construction on that, Craig Falkerts, and he put a stringer up on the of the ramp so it, it sloped from ground level by the door up to the to the original height of the original floor in there and then and then built the ramp on that so it, it became a ramp um, to do that the front door had to be moved from the center of the building it, it was at one time between this the pillars that you see from the out exterior of the building and we had to move it to the side of the uh, building so it lined up with that ramp. As the ramp had to be put 
on one side of the building so it wouldn't so you were still allowed to have a big room there. They also wanted to make sure to preserve the historical aspect of the building. As many community members discussed with Mike and Teresa, their time there as a child and what it meant to them. The building started as an addition to the bank that was right next door and eventually turned into a grocery store named H.W. Kitchen Store. It would remain a grocery store until 1973. With a few shifts of power over the time, Kitchen would soon pass to his business partner and worker, Walter Bushing, and the grocery store would become W.F. Bushing Groceries, which then was bought by Don Wilkin, a store worker, in 1955. Uh, the, the building itself was built, I think, in the 1880s by a, 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 by a, name, a guy named Perrin, who farmed east of town on the blacktop where Jeremy Stauffer now lives. He built it in conjunction with, the banker built the bank at that time, and Perrin built this half of that same building where, where the opportunity therapy is. And the upstairs was built by the uh, Masons, uh, Masons organization, where they held their meetings. And through the years, I think it's mostly been a grocery store uh, from different owners, passed from one owner to the other. The, the, the earliest I can remember, I think, was a uh, guy named Kitchen, about 1900 or so. And then it went to a Bushing, Kitchen and Bushing were together. He worked for Kitchen and then he took over the business. And then I think uh, Don Wilkins got in there after the war and he ran it until 1970 something, about 1970, as a grocery store. And then it, it and then it became, uh, uh, I think the Odd Fellows opened it, bought it or, or rented it or whatever for their meeting hall. And then after that, it was uh, bought uh, by uh, uh, Miller from, from uh, Allison. And I think she was gonna have a fabric shop or something in there, but that never really did develop. And then uh, from that, Mike and Teresa bought it and, and built it into this. It's a really good, solid building. Basement is real dry. It's got a full basement under the original building. And uh, uh, it's a good building, good, solid building. Once the building was constructed and the equipment was secured, the community soon followed. People of all walks of life came to the Fit Club to receive expert therapy as well as a workout peacefully among people they know. The environment at the building is set up to make everything you want to do, no matter who you are, achievable. The types of people you might see up there are casual lifters, actual strength builders, runners, uh, yoga specialists, or people who are student therapy. So one of the things that I think really makes the Clarksville Fit Club stand out from other fitness centers is that uh, we, we really focus and want every uh, person of every generation to feel welcome there. Um, we, we do have people who are part of our club that are teenagers and we have people that are in their 80s and 90s and we wanted it to be a very welcoming um, facility and a, and a welcoming atmosphere uh, because I think a lot of times people think that fitness centers are more for younger fit um, populations and um, they have a hard time getting started in a place like that. And I, and I don't think that we have that sort of atmosphere in, um, in our fitness center. And we do take a lot of pride in, in that fact that, that everybody does feel welcome. And we do like to have people who come to therapy for certain reasons and are prescribed exercises to continue on their own to have a place for them to be able to go. So we do use the fitness center, center also as a transition um, for our physical therapy patients to be able to continue to uh, work on their health and work on the things that we had taught them um, long term. And we, we feel like exercise is um, should be a part of everybody's life and um, it's something that somebody people should invest in themselves and, and they should make exercise a part of their daily routine. 
With the work and ambition of Mike and Teresa Nagin and plenty of others, the Fit Club is here and readily available for your health endeavors. Whatever your vision of health is for yourself, you're sure to find it here in Clarksville, Iowa for many years to come.